Hi everyone, so here's our first video on us going into some of the details of the differential rate law. In the previous video I set up the idea that rate laws can only be determined experimentally. So if we want to understand how a chemical reaction changes kinetically, then we need to do some experiments, collect some data, and then do some crunching on that data. So let's take a look at the concept of the differential rate law. So again, it can only be determined experimentally. You have to have data. And what the differential rate law is going to do for us, remember we have the differential rate law and we have the integrated rate law. This first type, the differential rate law, is it's going to allow us to understand how the rate of a reaction is dependent upon the concentration of reactants. Now it also turns out that buried inside of this analysis is also going to be the connection to temperature as well, but for now we're going to highlight the connection to just um, reactant concentration. So hopefully it makes a little bit of intuitive sense that if you change the concentration of your reactants from one experiment to the next, that that's going to change the rate of the reaction in most cases. It turns out it doesn't always change the rate, but in most cases it does. So the differential rate law is going to allow us to quantify the connection between how fast is a reaction, how long does it take to go, how long is its half-life, how long does it take for this reaction to go, and how is that connected to the reactant concentration. So we're going to take a look at this uh, decomposition of nitrogen dioxide, NO2 to form NO and O2. The first thing you do whenever you have um, uh, a differential rate law that you're trying to solve is you have to write out what's referred to as the general rate law. Now all differential rate laws have the same format. They basically have the word rate equals a constant we're going to call K, which is the rate constant, and then the rate constant is multiplied by the concentration of each reactant, in this case we only have one reactant, and then that reactant concentration is raised to some as of now unknown power. Now when I say rate here, right, this idea of rate, what I'm really talking about is the average rate. So I could be talking about the change in the concentration of the NO2 over the change in time, right? So when we write rate, what we're referring to right now is average rate. So the average rate of this reaction is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the reactant raised to some unknown power. So rate constant in order is what this unknown power is referred to. So my goal here as I go through and look at the data is I want to find out what the value of the order is and what the value of the rate constant is. And so really this is going to turn into kind of a math problem next. All right, so um, let's take a look at the decomposition of N2O5 to form NO2 and O2. So first thing I need to do is I need to write out the general rate law. Rate equals some unknown constant K times the concentration of each reactant. And again, in this system, I only have one reactant raised to some unknown order that we're going to call N. You can call it X, Y, or Z, whatever you want. Here, I'm just going to call it N. And so now we have to go collect some data, or better yet, we go get our graduate student to collect some data for us. And the type of data we collect is we take a look at the initial concentration, that's what that little superscript zero means, the initial concentration of our reactant, and these are variables that we can control. So we set up the experiment first with 0.9 molar, and then we do another experiment where we set up 0.45 molar, and then we monitor the initial rate of the reaction. What we mean by initial rate is how fast is the reaction, what is the change in concentration again, right, change of N2O5, for example, over the change in time. What is the average rate during the first few moments of the reaction? Maybe I have a, a way of following the concentration of N2O5, and I have a stopwatch, and so I'm collecting this kind of data, and that's what we have here. So. What I'll be able to do is I will be able to set up the connection between these concentrations and this initial average rate to eventually solve for the N, which will eventually allow me to solve for K. So let's take a look at how we are going to do this. The way we do this is we have to set up ratios. Okay, So I'm going to take the ratio of experiment 1 to experiment 2. 
that'll be equal to the rate of 1 over the rate of 2. That'll be equal to the rate constant K times the N2O5 concentration from the first set of data. That's the 1 there divided by the rate constant K times the concentration of N2O5 from the second set of data. Now notice here at this point, I have two unknowns, my K and my N. But by setting up this ratio um, uh, algorithm, I'm going to be able to eliminate one of these unknowns. So I'm going to start to plug in my actual data now. The rate from the chart on the previous slide for the first experiment was 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4 molar per second. The rate from the second experiment was 2.7 times 10 to the minus 4 molar per second. Then I equate that to these general rate laws that I'm setting up. Now at this point, some helpful things start to happen. Namely, my k's will factor out. I don't know what the rate constant is, but I know at this point that it factors out. And so now I can take the ratios of the rates to the ratios of these concentrations raised to the unknown power of n, and you can see that the rate ratio is 2, and the um, concentration ratio is also 2 to the n. So I know then when I solve this that n has to be equal to 1. So what I've just figured out is that the rate law for this reaction, the change in the concentration over time, can be equal to this unknown rate constant times the concentration of N2O5 to the first. This is going to be referred to as being a first order reaction. because the order with respect to the reactant, N2O5 here, is 1. So this is a first order reaction. Now the other thing I need to do is I need to solve for K. And I'm going to do this simply algebraically. So what I do is I take one of the sets of data for the rate and equate it to the concentration that um, that rate was uh, obtained at, and then I can algebraically solve for K. So you should take the time to go ahead and do this. Algebraically solve for K. Pick either experiment 1 or experiment 2, plug in the rate, plug in the initial concentration, and solve for K. The other thing I want you to pay attention to here as well as you do this is to make sure you can identify the units of K. All right. So, this is our first example of trying to determine the differential rate law using experimental data. In the next video, I'm going to show you another, um, another reaction with another set of data to hopefully um, help solidify this problem-solving algorithm that we're developing here.